What's going on guys? Welcome back to RCRV. We are in Florida. We are at Navarre Beach at probably one of our favorite campgrounds. I'm not gonna tell you where we're at yet. That's actually gonna be next week's video. We have an exclusive interview with the property owner and we're gonna take you on a tour of the entire property and show you why this is our favorite campground. This video, we're gonna talk about a very unique upgrade that we did to our Paradigm 390 MP here. If this is your first time to our channel, first we want to say welcome. We are a group of part-time campers with full-time jobs, showing you just how much fun you can have even if you're part-time. Today, we're talking about our new Alliance Paradigm 390. Now the unique thing about this rig is that it has two basement storage doors. And I gotta be honest with you, we love this RV. But when I first saw that it had two basement doors, I originally envisioned what I'm about to show you that we put into this. So let's go check it out. All right, so this, I'm gonna have to get on my knees because I'm so tall. You have to bear with me. Everybody went to the beach. I just stayed behind to shoot this video so I can show you guys this amazing outdoor kitchen that we put into this RV. So I think I can take my glasses off here. So this first bay door is actually just the pass-through storage. So this is your pass-through storage. Now, the Alliances have huge basement compartments. A lot of that is due because they have a drop frame. So this is the one that actually passes straight through to the opposite side of the rig. Now, this one was also storage. It's all connected and all open. Now, this is very unique to the 390s. As far as I know, the 390 is the only model that they have that has these two separate basement doors. Are you ready? This is it. We have put in an outdoor kitchen in our 390. I'm gonna take the camera up so you guys can check this out. So this is the outdoor kitchen we've done. Originally, when you get a 390, this side wall right here is diagonal. So it cuts out maybe a third of this storage. I actually had to reframe the back of it. So what we've done is I've reframed the back. There's an air duct that you have to frame around and then I was able to make it square. All right, I got all the back walls off. So right here is gonna be the countertop. So I wanna outlet there. This outlet was actually up in the corner. So we're gonna cut another hole so I can move the outlet in the center above the countertop. Uh, I took off the satellite panel to the wine guard. I'm gonna mount that over here on the other side of the refrigerator. And then the electric outlet was actually here, but I've drilled a hole and we're gonna place it back there. So what we're gonna do is come out about four and a half inches over so that we can clear this vent pipe and then just do a straight wall here, which eliminates that corner. That way I can get a refrigerator here. So you can see that this wall now, it goes straight back. Now, let's talk about this for a little bit. I fully expected that I was gonna to have to do all custom work. I was gonna cut all the wood, and build everything, but it actually turned out to be a lot easier than I expected. Everything you see here was actually purchased at Home Depot. So the cabinets are pre-made cabinets from Home Depot. They're 30 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches, and they fit perfect up here. The countertop is a prefab countertop that you can get at Home Depot. I did have to rip it down because it was a little bit too long. I believe it came in a four foot section. So I had to cut off about nine or 10 inches to get it to fit to the dimensions. We just purchased some wood to build up the bottom base. We had to get the refrigerator door up above this lip. There's about a two inch lip right here from your slam latches. So I had to build the base. We got the refrigerator up here, and then I went up probably about another inch to get the countertop. Now, this was our concern. I wanted at least 13 inches of space for the ice maker, and the original plan was to build this up higher and put a drawer right here. But to be able to get over a two inch lip, this countertop would probably have to be another seven inches higher to get a drawer in here. So what we did instead is we put the drawer on the side. So right here, as you can see, is the drawer that actually pulls out and gives us storage. So we still have access to it on the side and that enabled us to lower the countertop down. So we actually have more than 13 inches of space between the countertop and the cabinets. The thing is, the total dimensions of the cabinet are 12 inches, but when you open the top, 
the wood framing on the top actually came down. So the total measurements inside the cabinet were only 10 inches. So this is what I did. We got two and a half inch strips to match the cabinet and I actually secured them to the top of the cabinet. I'm gonna show you around the side a better shot and then cut open two holes in the top so that we could actually fit bottles in the top. So you can see the cutout areas, we cut this out and this out so that the bottles could actually fit all the way up. Now the doors also swing, 12 inches is perfect. So they will swing and they will miss the frame. And as you can see here, here is the extra strip that we put to add length to the cabinet. Now as for the backer board, this is just regular backer board. I think it's an eighth of an inch thick that you can get at Home Depot. This is the paneling I'm using. This is just what's covering the back wall. So I've got it framed out. I got one panel on there already. So you see, I covered the hole where the outlet used to be and I moved it here over where the counter is gonna be. I originally put an outlet here for behind the refrigerator, but then I started measuring and it's gonna be really close to plug in. So I actually moved it to this side and put paneling and then now I'm gonna put paneling over here that'll cover that hole and I'll be ready to start the base. And a lot of this was so that when we do outside entertaining, we wanted a flat countertop to be able to make drinks and set plates on. We could have put a sink here. The plumbing is actually right behind this wall. So we could very easily tap off the water lines, uh, put a sink here. I did think about doing a sink, but a sink would really take up all this countertop space and countertop space was the number one priority for us. So you do have motion lights on the other side of this bay. So there are two motion lights. There's one here and one there. We've actually turned them off for now because we've added a light bar up in here. So this is a light bar. Now this is plugged into the electrical outlet. This will only work when you're plugged into shore power. The cool thing about these though is that they come with a wireless switch that you can put in. So this is a wireless switch that turns on the overhead light. And you can take this switch, you can actually take it out. It's a magnetic clip. So this can act as a remote control and when you're not using it, it just goes back in. Now, having a sink outside is great if you're gonna do a lot of outdoor entertaining, being able to wash hands, wash dishes, not have to go in your camper. We did think of that. This was the solution that we came up with. This is our outdoor sink. I found this on Amazon actually. So the RV has a quick disconnect for water and this folding table is actually a sink. Now there are a lot of folding sinks that you can get on Amazon. I got this one specifically because this water fixture swings and just folds into the sink. So when you fold up the legs, you can fold that down. You don't have to twist and undo it all the time. This gave us our outdoor sink so that we could wash hands, wash dishes, still just stay outside and not have to go back inside the camper anymore. This really worked out very well and gives us all this counter space that we were looking for in this outdoor kitchen. Now I have some footage of the construction of this. It took me probably three days in total to get this all done, framed out, painted. The problem with projects like this is I'm so focused on what I'm doing and cutting the wood that I really forget to take video of it. All right, here it is, finally finished. The paint is just drying. So I painted the top, painted the trim, uh, the little sides of the drawer here. But before I put the refrigerator back in, I wanted to show you, this is what it looks like. So this is, you can see the wall here. That is the plug for the overhead light and then also the refrigerator will plug in there and you see how I framed around. This was the plug that was on the ceiling. This was there and I just swapped it with the electrical outlet that was there and moved the outlet down here. You see I got the cabinets in and this light goes, if you look up under here, I've got an LED light there. Drawer. You see these two holes 
there's two holes right here. So I have a hole here and here. That is actually my anchor points to hold the refrigerator in place. So I got an L bracket and you see on the back of the refrigerator here. So I screwed in this L bracket here and two screws go in here into the wall. And that's what holds this from moving around or sliding out. So they go and that L bracket will go right back here and hold the refrigerator. This was something that I saw in my mind when we bought this camper, I saw this space as an outdoor kitchen. It's very exciting to actually see it come true. Who knows, maybe Alliance will take this and, and run with it and offer it as an, an option on some of their rigs. But I can tell you, this is our first camping that we've done with this outdoor kitchen. It has done wonderfully. We are so happy with it. Now, the only thing that we have not finished is there is a pass-through port that we had to somewhat cover up, and that's to pass through your cables here. So right here, was the pass-through port for your cables. Now all the framing covered this up. My idea is I'm probably gonna take some quarter round trim and just run it along the edge just to be able to cover that up. All right, I don't know if you can hear me, there's a leaf blower going on, but we're gonna keep rolling with this though. I tell you overall guys, we're super happy with this. With the outdoor sink we have, now we have the outdoor kitchen, and then the gas quick connect allows us to plug in our Blackstone grill. So we have the grill, kitchen, and sink right here we've been able to just stay outside all evening long, entertain, cook, prepare drinks or food or whatever you'd like to. It's been better than what we ever could have imagined it was. We absolutely love it. And it was super easy to do. Again, all the stuff we bought was already pre-made. The only custom work that I really had to do was just the reframing the wall and then the bottom framing that the refrigerator and then the, the countertop sits on. And that was it. I believe in total, including the refrigerator, I probably spent just under $400 for the entire outdoor kitchen. All right guys, that's the video review of our outdoor kitchen. Now stay with us. We are on spring break here again in Navarre, Florida at one of our favorite campgrounds. We've got that video coming next. This is Paola's birthday that we're also celebrating. I don't know why she gets a week and I only got three days. If you watch my birthday video, it was amazing, but it was three days. That's the way it goes, I guess. If you like this outdoor kitchen install, give us one of these. Also, don't forget, leave us a comment, tell us hi, where you're watching from, where you're going. We would love to have you join our community. Thanks for watching, guys.